Okay, so good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to talk about how we can harness genomics to conserve myrtle rust impacted species. I'll go through um, the lessons learned with three critically endangered species native to Eastern Australia and how we can use and extend that framework and knowledge infrastructure to other species through ongoing work at the Botanic Gardens of Sydney. Genetic diversity plays an important role in the survival and adaptability of species and populations and is recognised as a key component of biodiversity. It enables a species to respond and adapt to um, change or a challenge. Therefore, genetic information can allow us to optimise conservation populations to be adapted and adaptable. So genetically diverse, adaptable, well suited to site conditions, adapted and resistant to myrtle rust, adapted. I'll talk about um, species listed as critically endangered due to myrtle rust as part of and interpretation and management applications. So I'm going to focus on Rhodamnia rubescens, the scrub turpentine, and Rhodomyrtus sidioides, native guava, which were once widespread rainforest species along the east coast of Australia. These were sampled across New South Wales by um, Threatened Species Officer Craig Steen, who will go into detail about the monitoring and on-ground management of these two emergency species uh, later in the conference. The other species I'll talk about is Lenwebia species main range, which occurs in high altitude cloud forest around the New South Wales Queensland border. So we included samples um, from related species prominence and black owl range, and there were some putative hybrids identified in the field as well. Observations of rust infection were recorded using the Myrtle Rust um, Assessment Pro Forma established as part of the New South Wales SOS Myrtle Rust um, Emergency Response Project. So the aims and objectives of this project were to describe the genetic health population structure and genetic diversity across their known distribution screen the ex situ collections which were at the Australian Botanic Garden Mount Annan and the Boudiri Botanic Gardens for clones to inform collection management, determine and compare diversity and kingship among in situ and ex situ plants to understand how representative the current ex situ collections are, and as an um, example of the possible applied interpretations of newly available genetic knowledge, we determine optimal selection of individuals across several cryopreservation scenarios. So genetic variability is present in Rhodamni rubescens and is distributed along a latitudinal gradient. As we can see, um, that gradient colouring um, on the principal component analysis where like clusters with like and the map of samples. The same gradient was seen in Rhodomyrtus. F statistics, um, so the observed and expected heterozygosity and inbreeding coefficient, indicated a preferentially outcrossed mating system for both species. And both species uh, distribution extends north into Queensland, and from these observed patterns, it's expected that those populations harbour genetic variation that's not represented uh, within the current ex situ collection. Therefore, sampling and analyses um, from Queensland are recommended to capture that increased genetic variability, and this is currently underway in collaboration with um, the Queensland Government. So one of the first questions we ask in these conservation genomics projects is often, is it a real species? So we find that Lenwebia species main range is not genetically distinct from Lenwebia species black owl range and Len Lenwebia prominence. So genetic diversity is also, distrib um, is also distributed along a longitudinal gradient in contrast to the previous species. As commonly seen with species with restricted distributions, inbreeding and a deficit of heterozygotes was observed. Um, and there are genetically intermediate individuals present, supporting the ex existence of a species complex. 
genetic analysis of putative hybrids identified via morphology in the field, they appeared a bit more hairy, suggested these plants were crosses between main range and prominence, although it didn't appear um, they were F1 or 2 hybrids from the analysis. And the um, analysis of admixture identified an additional five um, genetically intermediate individuals that were a mix of the main range and the prominence. So here, the species complex should be managed as an entity, and we recommend further sampling of black owl range and prominence to better understand the complex and its genetic health and structure. Additionally, it's particularly important to understand the genetic distance of um, main range to Lassio clatter, which main range was previously um, a part of, as that will also have management implications. So a genet is a genetic individual, and a genet can be made up of multiple ramets or clones, these modules. For Rhodamnia, um, there are 40 unique genets among the 80 individuals in the ex situ collections that we genotyped, and these individuals included 24 from Budiri, 39 from the Mount Annan collection, and 17 from tissue culture. And genets from multiple ramets were identified across each of these collections. There was minimal overlap between these three collections, only one genet was shared. For Rhodomertis, um, of the 191 samples genotyped, 90 98 were from the ex situ collection at Mount Annan, and we identified 60 unique genets there. 18 of those genets are represented by multiple ramets. And for Lenwebia, there was overall a low level of clonality. The 83 ramets um, consisted of 75 genets. So this information um, can be used to streamline the ex situ collection, and redundant clones um, could be distributed to other botanic gardens. Um, Amelia Martiniensa will talk about a project to develop dispersed collections focusing on native guava later in the conference. And the plants can also um, be used in rust experiments to determine if certain genets are more resistant to rust. Field observations could be confounded by environmental factors, um, so they often don't give an accurate indication of rust susceptibility. And gathering information from different data streams, so genetic field phenotype and experimental phenotype, is valuable in building capacity for effective conservation management. The ex situ collections of Rhodamni and Rhodomenus are representative of wild diversity, which is great to see. However, the Rhodamnia, Mount Annan, and uh, Bordery Botanic Gardens represent different parts of the species' genetic diversity. So we should um, strategically mix those materials um, from both collections and that will allow us to maximize genetic diversity and conservation actions. The ex situ collections of um, Lenwebia at Mount Annan is spread across the genetic diversity of main range, but doesn't extend to the genetic diversity present in other Lenwebias. So expanding the ex situ collection may be recommended to capture um, further genetic diversity after follow-up investigation of that species complex. So now we have all this genetic information. How do we translate into, uh, this into outcomes for conservation? So here we provide an example for optimizing the selection of individuals for resource intensive methods such as tissue culture or cryopreservation at Plant Bank for genetic diversity. And these methods have been specifically identified as suitable for Rhodamnia and Rhodomertis. So it's strongly discouraged to randomly select individuals for a conservation population as this will diminish the long-term survival capacity of populations. So we implemented an algorithm, um, Opgen Mix, to select individuals for a range of collection sizes, six um, to 16 in the table, and I just show Rhodamnia as an example. If we look closely at the genetic relationships in this tree for n equals six and 10, we can see that the se selection is scattered relatively evenly um, across that tree, which reflects the fact that genetic variability is distributed along a latitudinal gradient. And this selection approach can be tailored to the goals and designs of specific conservation actions. So how come there are healthy looking plants in the field like this? Are they resistant to myrtle rust? And how can we verify this? Pilot rust assays, assays in Rhodamnia rubescens at the Plant Breeding Institute at the University of Sydney identified 17% of 
individuals were highly resistant um, to myrtle rust and 40% had some resistance. There was a spectrum, spectrum of responses to myrtle rust observed. Um, wild origins for, res, uh, for resistance, resistant plants included diamond head, for example, and that corroborated field observations as there were healthy looking plants which were later identified in the genetic analysis to be clones. So that, that genet likely had a resistant genotype. And this highlights two important points. Firstly, that there are tangible pathways to recovery for species that are highly susceptible to myrtle rust, um, as in a genetically informed breeding program. And two, that we need to act quickly um, before overall diversity is lost and we're left with a small number of evolutionarily unrepresentative resistant individuals. So these SOS species provide a model for other priority species. Um, so this is the framework project, which is currently ongoing at um, the Research Centre for Ecosystem Resilience, and will hopefully achieve the following to establish knowledge infrastructure on the current state of genetic variation across species um, known distribution. So detailed genetic information is crucial for the effective management of these impacted species and is not yet available for many of them. So using these kind of um, time effective workflows that have been developed, we can provide a comprehensive understanding of species genetic health and diversity using um, DartSec. Specific species will also kind of expand in scope to identify rust um, resistance um, candidate loci using whole genome sequencing where reads will be mapped to reference genomes. Um, Secondly, to characterise myrtle rust resistance in each species. So for species um, that are known to be highly susceptible, plants will be screened as a confirmation of susceptibility, but also that will allow the discovery of resistant genotypes if they exist. Um, and individuals that appear healthy in the field should be screened as a priority, as um, you know, to just to clarify those field observations, which can be confounded by environmental factors. The overall um, knowledge of resistance and remaining diversity can then be used to increase the proportion of resistant individuals in, um, in wild populations, so we can increase a chance of population persistence in the face of um, myrtle rust as well as other selective factors. Thirdly, it's to build up a core germplasm collection that has been genotyped and rust phenotyped for use in, for use in conservation activities. Um, so this. Um, knowledge infrastructure will enable the selection of optimal genotypes for um, things like establishing ex situ germplasm collections, including seed production areas and translocation activities. And then we can also um, streamline those ex situ collections um, to be resilient and representative of wild diversity. So we can use our resources efficiently across single or multiple collections. Um, And also we hope to provide recommendations for conservation management and develop methods for generally optimising populations to be adapted and adaptable. So extending those existing workflows to quantify the trade-off between genetic diversity and rust resistance for the selection of genotypes to maximise ecological resistance, uh, resilience um, of conservation populations for a range of scenarios. So what are these priority species? So we've taken them from the Myrtle Rust National Action Plan. So we're working our way from the top um, of that list of species um, with uh, firstly selecting species with at least some of its distribution in New South Wales. And this framework project will contribute to the goal um, in the threatened species strategy to secure 100% of nationally listed species impacted by Myrtle Rust in insurance collections and populations by 2026. So the emergency species have already been, already been covered by um, SOS projects and some extensions of these projects are ongoing. There are also ongoing projects with species including Maluka, which Alyssa just spoke about, as well as many other species which we've generated reference genomes for, they're highlighted in green. And Jason Bragg will expand on some of the other aspects of the projects at RESA, um, particularly for Rodamni and Maluka later in the conference. So phase one of the framework project has started, started and is mostly in the sampling phase. Um, 
So, yeah, you can see the species here, Archirotomotus, Decospermum, some Gossia, Syzygium, and uh, Meluga. So if you have any ideas on other species that should be prioritised for the second phase of the um, project, let us know. All right, so to conclude, there are many more species that need our attention um, and that occur along a spectrum of resistance from emergency species like Rhodamnia and Rhodomyrtus and Lemwembia that bring conservation challenges. There are opportunities to characterise genetic diversity and resistance to rust to guide management actions, but we need to act quickly before we lose the genetic diversity within these species to myrtle rust. And I would like to um, acknowledge the many collaborators who were involved in this work and the funding that has made it possible. Um, so this work was done as part of my PhD, which I recently submitted, working with the Botanic Gardens of Sydney. And I've just started a postdoc at the CSRO, working on biocontrol of invasive plants based at the Australian National Herbarium. So if anyone here is interested in weed biocontrol, I'd be really keen to chat to you um, about that. Um, thank you. Stay around for some questions if there's any. Hi, Nick, it's uh, Nick Dexter here. I'm the sort of overall manager at the Buddhary Botanic Gardens, and we've got a rather a large number of Rhodamnia rabescens that we'd want to return to the wild quite soon. Um, as you know, you, you worked with us to sort of genotype them, but we need to sort of, we'd like to do it as a kind of controlled experiment, an ecological experiment, and uh, we'd certainly be open to advice on experimental design and what parameters we should be measuring, because we've got about 300 plants that are looking for a home. Yeah, so we definitely recognise that, you know, the effort in plant maintenance it takes to upkeep ex situ collections of this size and you know, all the metadata and things that are associated with the collection. So yeah, one of the things we wanna do is get these plants into the ground. Um, we have some plans to um, basically establish a seed production area where we plant the resistant rhodamnias into the ground um, at that botanic garden. So then hopefully they um, are able to um, produce seed. We can collect that seed and because um, resistant plants are over, will be overrepresented in that planting, then hopefully those um, resulting offspring will have a high level of resistance and then be able to be used for translocations and other future um, actions and then not need, you know, to be constantly sprayed and things kind of just a production area that's self-sustaining that can be um, used as a resource there. <laughs> 